So in this week's vlog, I had a ton of content to share with you. Um, some weeks are just like that. We have a lot going on and I tend to film more of our lives during the week. And then other weeks, I feel like we don't have a lot going on. So it's fine. We just, I just don't film that, that much. Um, but since I had so much going on this week, I have decided to split all of the content up this week into two different vlogs. Um, what you're going to see, the clips that you're going to see are just a Monday night hangout with me. And then the next video vlog thing for this week will be the rest of our week and all the little things that we do during the week and um, working on the beginning of a big garden project. So I hope you guys enjoy this two part weekly vlog this week. And um, I'll talk to you guys again after the clips are over. Bye. Hey guys, so it is Monday and I am making dinner for Dean and the boys when they get home. Um, we are doing beef stew and then I'm gonna do cornbread in the oven, but I'll do that a little bit later. So right now I'm just kind of putting this beef stew in the Instant Pot. It calls for some red wine and I don't have any open, so I'm opening some and I'm gonna put some in the beef stew, but I'm also gonna pour myself a little half glass and enjoy that tonight while they're gone. Um, so it's Monday and it's the first week in March and I have a bunch of stuff that I wanted to get done this week. And I'll tell you, last night I was sitting and I was doing my um, schoolwork for my Vitalist Herbalist course and I paused what I was doing and I sat down with my planner and I was kind of like going through this week trying to plan out things that I was going to do this week. And I am telling you, I think I overloaded myself a little bit because I'm feeling a little overwhelmed with all the things that I need to get done this week. But the thing is, for me at least, it's fine because whatever I don't get done today, I'll just mark it off my list and move it somewhere else on my list this week. Um, so that's kind of great. Like I'm not gonna let it stress me out too much that I overplanned this week. But I have a lot of things that I wanted to get done tonight while the boys are gone to piano. Um, today, if you followed my vlogs for long, you'll know that we homeschool and you'll know that um, Mondays we have a really light homeschool day and most of the time that has me freed up to do more online work on Mondays, um, clean the house from the weekend because Sundays are crazy. We're gone all day, we're barely here, and when we are here, it's not really a lot of time for cleaning. Um, so this morning I got up, I got the boys doing, you know, their schoolwork that they needed to do. And, um, we cleaned, um, Dean and I actually have been going to the gym together three days a week. So we're getting up super early, super early to me. We have to be at the gym from six to seven, but it's kind of nice too. Like I'll tell you, I've never really been a like get up really early and workout person. Um, but it has been really nice. I am like energized all day long after working out. I still have one cup of coffee in the morning and I drink my little workout drink while I'm running on the treadmill or riding the bike or whatever it is I'm doing because I'm trying to get more cardio in because when I do my workouts here at home, they're like body weight training workouts. I don't know if I've ever showed you guys what I do, but I have some videos that I use and then I have some apps on my phone that sometimes I use Anyway, I can talk about exercise and whatever in a whole different video. If you're interested, leave a comment and let me know. But, so we're working out, get home, I feel energized. We're eating breakfast together, which is something that I don't do very often. I just don't eat breakfast very much. Anyway, um, I have so much to tell you guys, it's not even funny. <laughs> I'm like, where do I start? Um, so for Lent, I am doing a vegan diet. That's one thing that I need to start with for Lent. It's like 40 days and I'm not counting Sundays because I, I'm not Catholic, but I think traditionally with Lent, Sundays don't count. It's like six days a week and somehow that ends up for 40 days be between Ash Wednesday and Easter. I think that's how that works. So for me, the last several years, I've always done the Daniel fast with some friends from church and that's a very restrictive fast and it's only 21 days. So it's very doable and Dean's done it with me. But it's not fun. It's like you're doing it for spiritual purposes. You're really denying yourself. So anyway, this year, I didn't feel the need to do something that drastic. But I did want to do this like spring reset. I love the Daniel Fast in that I like going vegan for a little while because I normally don't eat vegan all the time. Um, so I like doing that. It makes me have 
I just feel like I have more energy. I feel like it's a really good kind of gentle food-like cleanse to do in the spring, and spring's a really great time for that sort of thing. Um, so this year I decided I'm not gonna do a really strict Daniel fast. I'm gonna do a full vegan diet for the full 40 days of Lent, whereas like the Daniel fast is only 21, I think I said that. Um, and I'm not gonna worry about Sundays. I'm not gonna be like overly strict with it. If I accidentally eat something that had an egg in it because somebody else made it, I'm not gonna freak out, you know, it's just, it's fine. Um, so I've been doing that and this is my third week um, and I have four or five weeks left. Anyway, it's going really well. I'm the only one doing it. Dean and the boys are just eating normal. So that's why I'm making them beef stew tonight. Um, and this is one of the things about my Mondays. This is what I was getting to on Monday. Um, I got up and I got home from the gym and I cleaned up and got the boys their breakfast, got them started on school and their chores, and then I had all morning to make my meals for this week. So I have picked out, um, I have a cookbook here. Um, let me show you guys. Sorry, I've got this Weight Watchers cookbook out for the beef stew. I've got this cookbook called The Plantable Table. It's by Andrea Duclos. I'm not even sure how to pronounce her last name, but she is a blogger at Oh Dear Drea. Dot com. I think that's the name of her blog and I love her blog and I like her. She's a vegan though and I bought her cookbook a long time ago when I was doing Daniel Fest stuff and needed some recipes. And then I also have a ton of printed recipes here from um, the Minimalist Baker. You can Google that and she's got a ton of vegan recipes. So I have printed off a bunch of recipes that look good from the Minimalist Baker and then I have Drea's cookbook and I just kind of go through those and I pick like three or four. Sorry, I'm knocking cutting boards down. I pick like three or four recipes a week and I'm making them all on one day, like, like batch cooking. Um, and then I stick them in the fridge. I'll show you guys my refrigerator in just a second. Um, and then I can just eat off of those throughout the week. So I just pull a little bit out for lunch, pull a little bit out for dinner. I have meal planned like I always do, um, to make Dean and the boys their lunches and their dinners. And then I already have all my food ready. So it's not like every day at lunch, I have to prepare everybody else food and then I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna eat and then the same thing for dinner like my stuff is all prepared ready to go and I just make our the boys and Dean's lunch and dinner as I normally would so that has been super helpful I've really enjoyed the meals that I'm making so far I don't think I've had anything that I didn't like there are definitely meals that I will remake and some that I probably won't remake but I so far I've liked everything that I've had um, yeah, so I did that today. I, I prepped like four different meals um, and I have a couple left over from last week that are still in there, a little bit of things. Um, so that's going well, working out, new little morning rhythm on the days that we do go to the gym and um, having my meals ready for the week. So that was one thing on my list today. I have some work stuff on my list. Um, Dean is gonna pick up my groceries. I, I made a meal plan for the week. I ordered groceries. He's gonna pick those up and I'll put those away when he gets home. Um, a friend gave me a new pot at church the other day for an orchid. We had some friends over the other night and he saw my orchid and he was like, oh, you need a different type of pot for that. It'll do way better if you have this specific type of pot. And he was like, I have an extra one. So he brought me that at church on Sunday. So I got, I've got to replant that tonight and I was gonna do that with you guys in just a minute. I've just gotta get this beef stew in the instant pot, get that cooking, and then later on I'll make the cornbread. So um, I've gotta get some work done tonight after I get my little orchid repotted. Uh, what else is I gonna do? Oh, I wanna take you guys outside and show you where the bulbs are coming up in my flower bed. I will actually link to the video above. I'm not sure which side of the video it's gonna be on, but um, I planted bulbs last fall and I did a vlog about it and my tulips and my crocuses are coming up. This is the first year that I've planted bulbs here at this new house. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Let me turn this oven on. But they're coming up and I actually was watching this other vlogger that I like on YouTube and her name is, um, it's like right at home, that's her name. Um, her name's Helen. Anyway, so she's in the UK and she planted like these crocus bulbs and it was like a mixture of colors and all her yellow ones popped up first and I didn't know this but she said that typically yellow crocuses will bloom before the purple ones and I have purple variety so when I went to Sam's last year and I said this in my fall bulb planting video it was like a mixture of 
like purple and white and like a variegated purple crocuses and all of them are taking forever to come up. I think I have a little one that's actually like a tiny little bud. I took a picture of it the other day. It's so cute and I want to go out there and look at it. It's kind of drizzly and rainy today, but that's okay. I want you guys to see what's going on in the garden um, because that's a big part of what I have going on in my life right now during the spring is garden fever, which I have majorly. Um, <laughs> So we'll go out there and look at that. We'll plant that um, or repot the orchid in just a second. Let me get this going. And another thing that I'm working on tonight that I've got to get done this week as far as work stuff goes is I've got this really popular blog post about making an usnea tincture. Um, usnea is like a lichen. It's kind of like a mossy sort of looking thing that grows on trees. And it's it grows around here a lot like um you have to be careful you have to sustainably harvest it because it's really slow growing but it grows around here a lot and you can collect it off of dead branches that have fallen off of trees um anyway so i made this tincture a long time ago and i blew the tincture up i i just i was not being very smart about it and so i wrote about my experience in this blog post well that blog post is really popular and I had written this really long in-depth article about how to identify and harvest and make all these different preparations with Usnea for a magazine. And so I thought, since the blog article about my experience blowing up my tincture is really popular and people love to learn about Usnea and they're asking a lot of questions because it's not really one of those like really popular herbs that's talked about a lot. Um, but anyway, I thought that I would take that magazine article, which has been years and years and years since I wrote that, probably five years, and rework it, edit it, and then offer it as like a free download for people who sign up to receive my letters. It's like my email newsletter list. I call them letters, and I write it every two weeks. Um, it's like a little recap of what's going on in my life. I usually do some sort of like little herbal, seasonal herbalism type tutorial, how-to, informational article, and then I share a little bit about things that I'm enjoying or products or courses that I've got going on right now, just stuff like that. So it's, it's kind of like a lifestyle herbalism kind of resource newsletter. Um, and so I thought people, if they want that full article, they want all of that detailed information about Usnea, then I will include that in that really popular blog post. So I've edited about half of that post right now and I have to go back and finish the last half of it and then get it all ready as a PDF and up on my website and I've got to create an opt-in. So that's one of my big things this week. I have that to do. I have to finish up a half written blog post regarding spring cleaning. And then I have another blog post for my membership site, which is also really new and I'm really excited about it. I'm going to tell you guys about that later. Um, but I've got this 15 spring herbs that you can find. It's definitely in Southern Appalachia since that's where I'm from, but you can find a lot of these growing all over the U.S. and probably a lot in Europe too because any of us here in the Northern Hemisphere and we're sort of in the temperate zone, you're going to be able to find the same herbs. But anyway, so I've got to finish up that and I've got um, some stuff I've got to order online for my membership site, some lots of different little things like that. So my week is busy. I have packed some stuff in there. I'm probably not going to get it all done. I'm going to move some stuff around, but these are some priority things that I'm getting done today since we didn't have school today and um, Mondays are just a good day to get a ton of stuff done especially because we don't do school during the morning sorry if that's really loud um, and then Dean's gone with the boys to piano in the evening it's like my day to get a bunch of stuff done so anyway that's kind of a little preview of all I've got going on this week um, and what I got to do today, I'd really like to get that Usnea thing finished today and all uploaded. I would feel so productive if I got dinner done, got my pot replanted, got my Usnea article upgrade, whatever you call those things, opt-in things, I don't know, got that done. <laughs> trying to think what else I needed to do tonight. I feel like I had some other stuff that I needed to do. I think maybe I already moved some stuff off my list today that I was going to do. I... It took me a lot longer to get all of um, all of my meals done earlier today than I thought it would. I thought, you know, I only have three meals, and whenever I look at meals on um, on the minimalist baker, I always filter her recipes where it's like 30 minutes or less because I don't want the meals to take me forever. So I really thought I would spend like an hour and a half, maybe getting all these meals done, and maybe less than that because I was doing them all at the same time. 
but I think it actually ended up taking me like two or two and a half hours because I was trying to do school with the boys too and I was getting interrupted <laughs> every two seconds, um, which is normal in my life because I homeschool and I have four kids. So lots of delightful, lovely interruptions in my day, which is all good. Um, so yeah, it took me a lot longer this morning, and so I didn't get to my work stuff as quickly as I thought I would. So I'm here doing it tonight, and I'm not going to get everything on my list done today. That's okay, though. That's life, right? Okay. I think that's all I needed to do. I'm trying to look at this recipe at the same time. Everything else. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to get some of this stuff in. I've got to grab carrots and potatoes, get this chopped up, get that put in. And I think we'll pot, we'll, blah, blah, blah. we will repot this orchid first and then I'll take you guys outside and show you my bulbs in my garden. They make me so happy. Cause the skies are gray today. So bulbs are making me happy. I'm so ready for spring. The frogs were croaking last night and I laid in the bed and I was just being very quiet, just trying to listen. Can I hear him? Can I hear him? <laughs> like spring is here and I'm telling you guys we have some massive frogs like like big big bullfrogs I don't know how to hunt for bullfrogs so my kids like to catch them but like we don't eat them or anything like that Ooh. sounds gross to me but I know like some people eat frogs and it's all good but I'm not that person okay potatoes and carrots and I'm gonna cut that up and get that going and then we'll repot an orchid together Okay, so this is my orchid. Um, I have had it for about three years. And if you guys have seen the movie, um, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, then you will know what a love fern is. This is my friendship orchid. So when Dean and I lived at our house up on the mountain, I had a friend come in and landscape our mountain. We had just terraced the front of our yard because we lived up on a mountain and we had no front yard. So we terraced the front of the yard and she works at a nursery and she loves gardening. And so she came in and she designed and planted all of these gardens in our terraced area and like all around the top part of our house. And she gave me this orchid when she was doing that and it was tiny. It had two leaves, um, these very bottom leaves down here. They were tiny and it had a one little bitty stem and it only had like two or three flowers on it at that point. And so this is like my friendship orchid and I, I take a lot of, um, I don't want to say pride because I don't like the whole prideful thing. I, I guess a lot of intent, I put a lot of intention into taking care of this plant because I really want it to last and it has a lot of meaning to me. It, there's a lot of significance. Um, it was because of her that I grew to love gardens and I decided I want to learn how to how to design and plant and grow things myself and so here she's been here several times looking around she gives me tips and ideas I will probably go over to the nursery that she works at in North Carolina and buy plants from her at some point for the garden beds this year that I'll be working on anyway so this orchid the boys have broken when they were littler and we were at the other house they broke the little um flower, I don't know what these are, flower stalks off. And so it didn't bloom. After that first year, it didn't bloom for a year because they broke it. But I finally moved it out of the way where they weren't climbing on the counters anymore near it. And after three years, this is what it looks like. So I found a stick the other day to hold this piece up. <laughs> and I have, let's see, four leaves on that side and four on this side, and it'll probably sprout another leaf here soon because it keeps sprouting leaves and then it, it keeps shooting up new little stems, I think, each year. There's another one that comes up. Anyway, I have some mountain dirt in here from our house on the mountain, so I'll be keeping that because that's significant to me as well because I love my house on the mountain, so I'm gonna keep this dirt, but my friend from church said that it would do better if it was in a pot with holes in it because um, as far as I know about orchids, like what I know about orchids, they are, I can't remember what they're called. They live on trees. They don't, they're not parasitic. They don't like suck the life out of the tree, but they're kind of like, they live in synergy with the tree. They kind of just sit on the tree and 
they're kind of like an air plant. So they suck moisture out of the air through their root system. And so whenever you plant an orchid, you'd have really loose potting soil mix. And so the mountain dirt is really great because there's a lot of um, debris and stuff in there. It keeps the dirt really loose. But I think he was saying to me that having all of these holes in here will allow air to get into the dirt better and it will grow faster. So I'm gonna try it and we'll see. Um, I really like this pot. It's definitely like the style of a lot of things I have in the house. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a bowl. I'm gonna get my orchid out first very carefully. I'm gonna take a bowl and I'm gonna dump my mountain dirt in there and I'm gonna mix it with some of the orchid soil, like he put some in a bag for me that's specific for orchids. Gonna mix that stuff up. I'm gonna transfer it to this new um, planter and I'll probably have some dirt left over so I'll save that in case I buy another orchid at some point and then I bought some orchid fertilizer some organic orchid fertilizer the other day and once I have it repotted in this pot I'm gonna fertilize it and see if that helps it to do better so let me go grab a pan or a bowl <laughs> okay so I'm gonna start by dumping this orchid soil into this bowl I don't know if you guys can see it looks like a lot of like tree bark and chips it's real loose really dry really loose so orchids you have to water them more frequently than other plants because the soil dries out so easily so if you hear weird noise in the background it's my instant pot it's trying to come to pressure so it's making weird hissing sounds just so you know what that is <laughs> it could be a dog or a cat too we have those around making noise all right I'm gonna very carefully Try not to break or pull any flowers off. Okay. I'm gonna carefully try to lift this out and show you what it looks like. Don't break. So you can see the roots. Some of them are like dead, like they're like flat and kind of rough looking. Ooh, I'm getting dirt everywhere. But some of the others you can see have grown Kind of long but they're not they're not too they're kind of shallow they're not real long roots um so this dirt i'm gonna set this gently right here trying not to break anything and i'm just gonna dump my mountain dirt in there it's a mixture of potting soil rocks i looked up how to make this myself because i didn't have any um i didn't have any orchid dirt when i was actually doing this so i don't know if you guys can see this it's a mixture of like whatever the topsoil stuff is in the mountain. So there's a lot of pine needles in there. There's a, it's really loose, like really nice compostable dirt. Lots of sticks are in there. I even put some rocks in there and here's some sort of nutshell that I stuck in there. Just anything to make the soil really loose so that the water will flow through it and the roots aren't stuck in water because they'll rot if they are. So I'm just gonna mix this mountain soil up in with the potting soil he gave me that's for the orchids. And then I'm going to put this dish over this bowl and just kind of fill this bowl half full so I can get my orchid in there. So some of this stuff's wanting to come out the side, but that's okay. Okay, now my pot just came to the right temperature, so it should be quiet now. All right, so let me see if I can get this put back in. Come here, come here, little friend. My little friend orchid. So you can even see some new root, roots are starting to grow off the side as it gets taller. It starts wanting to send out new shoots. I think I need to take some of this out. Let me dump a little bit of that out. Ooh, dropping dirt everywhere. Okay, that's good. Now I'm just gonna fill the sides with dirt and try not to let it fall down into the, between the leaves, because I don't want any moisture staying between those leaves. Okay. Let me turn it this way. So now my friend Fern will have even more friend stories to go along with it since my friend from church gave me some soil and a new little home for it. <laughs> it's like friendship orchid all around, all the way around. How nice is that? I'm super grateful to have good friends and people who are just kind and give you advice and tips and 
give you stuff just to be nice. It's really nice to have people in your life like that. So very blessed. All right. So now that's kind of covered up those new roots that we're shooting out. So that's good. Okay. I think, I think that's it. I think that's all I need to do. I do need to mix up some of that organic orchid fertilizer stuff I was telling you about. Let me get all this dirt back in here and I'm going to store this dirt somewhere. Maybe I'll buy a new orchid this year. And then I'll try to see if I can have like a different color, like maybe a white one or something. Oh, I also thought I would paint my nails tonight, especially now that I'm in the dirt and I'm getting them all gross. I was thinking already that I would give myself a manicure and maybe do like a gel, gel nails. I've done gel nails in the past. I'm not that great at them. They really help to make your nails nice and strong, but they always seem to like kind of start chipping and breaking. And I think it's probably because I'm doing them wrong. Sorry, my hair is being weird. Um, but I'm in the mood to do something that will last hopefully longer than it has in the past and see if I can get it to actually last for a while. Um, so I may do that tonight too, depending on if I get that Usnia project done that I'm working on. Okay, put that little plant marker in there. Now I just found this stick. So when I first got this plant, these little sticks, I don't know if you guys can see that, were in there, but they're too short now because my plant has grown so much. So I went outside and I found a stick like this with a lot of little branches sticking off of it. And I just kind of like prop this thing up. I stick this down in there and I prop this up so that it stands. And my plant will not fall over. Be careful. Anyway, that should be doing okay for now. I feel like I need to put it in a different spot. It's not really working very well right there. Go in. Get it in there. Maybe I need to come this direction. There we go. Oh. Well, it was staying a lot better than in the first, the other pot than it is this one. That looks sad. Hmm. Anyway, I need to get another stick. So this side, so I can hold this side up. Or I could stick this in and let it sit right there, maybe. Gosh, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm learning as I go, like most things in life. Just figure it out as you go. That's not gonna work. So I'm just gonna put this back in here and I'll tie that up to it later on if I need to. This is doing okay. It's okay right there. Charlie, hi buddy. Are you a thirsty boy? You guys can't see Charlie. He's getting so big. He's getting so big. Okay, so I think that's good. I think that's good. Let me grab some of that organic fertilizer so you guys can see now. Looking good. I think I did it correctly. All right, fertilizer. I just have to find out what I did with the fertilizer. I can't remember where I put it. Okay, so this is the Orchid Bloom Booster that I have. It's from Espoma Organic Orchid Bloom Booster. So you're supposed to mix a half a cap full with a quart of water. And that says that's two teaspoons, but I only need a cup of water because I have one little plant and a cup of water is probably still way too much for this one little plant. So I did a half of a teaspoon in my cup of water. I'll show you what that looks like. Just looks like brown, yucky water. Kind of stanky. Anyway, um, you're supposed to thoroughly drench the soil and then you let it dry out and you repeat this every two weeks. So I'm gonna stick my plant in my bowl so that when I water it, if the water comes out, that's okay, it'll drain. Let me make sure I'm doing that right. Water the plant and then thoroughly drench the soil of the plant. Okay, so this will be good enough. I'm just gonna slowly pour this in, and because it has really loose soil, um, the, it drains out really fast. So 
So I'm just gonna kind of keep pouring this around until my soil is soaked. And maybe this will help my blooms and just strengthen up the um, leaves of the plant a little. Yeah, all right, so I can see it coming out in the bottom now. And I'm almost done. So that took almost a cup for this size pot. Okay, so I'm just gonna let this sit here and soak that stuff up into the soil. I will put my bag of extra soil and my empty pot somewhere with all my other pots and my soil mixes, which I think Dean moved out of our garage into the shop because we're getting ready to start a garage work for our new homeschool room slash study slash apothecary area. Anyway, I'm gonna grab you guys and we'll go outside. I wanna show you guys the bulbs that are blooming out there. Can you guys hear the frogs? I don't know if you guys can hear them or not, but they are making some noise. So we've had a ton of rain and a front yard. This is where a tree was, a Bradford pear tree, and a Bradford pear tree was here. If you look all the way over there, there's like a burn spot. There was a tree there that had already fallen when we first moved here. These two trees were still here, but last winter they broke, like right in the center, which Bradford pears are bad to do. So we had my father-in-law come and dig them out. We've been cutting and burning. <laughs> this stuff getting it out of here and because the way it's like our property is kind of like a swamp we're so low it stays wet all the time i mean we have four ponds on the property for crying out loud there's a lot of like marshy area um it makes me feel like i live in the bayous of louisiana like we have herons in our pond and all kinds of all kinds of things lots of frogs anyway um we need to have the front yard because water piles up through here really badly and right back in there too. We're gonna have like French drains put in. I think I talked about this in another video as well. That was supposed to happen in the winter. It didn't happen, but that's the plan to get rid of all of the watery stuff in this front yard. We're gonna have it leveled off so it's like a really nice area for playing and picnics and whatever. Anyway, so here's the garden that I did last year and this is what it's looking like in the winter. As you can see, my lavender here in the front's doing really well, but my lavender in the back, which you can't see yet, is kind of smaller, which I think that means it's not getting enough sun, so I'm gonna have to move them. I have some succulents in this um, little tin because they'll spread everywhere if I take them out and I don't want them spreading. And then I've got some echinacea here, which is dead right now, you can't see it. But if you look right here, this green looking grass, these are crocuses that I planted right through here. So these are purple. They're gonna come up and bloom hopefully soon. Um, I have a bunch of phlox. These are, I think, pink phlox on this side, and on the other side of the path, there's purple phlox around that side. Those will bloom in spring. My hydrangeas are like a whitish green color, and they turn rusty pink in the fall. And then, of course, around my rock, I've got a bunch of succulents, and there's a corabel over there, which you can't see that either because it's all kind of died back. Um, right here on this post, there are bulbs. There are like some purple alums that are really tall and pretty. Those, I think those are like spring, late spring, summer. Um, I planted right here, I planted some um, English thyme, or not English thyme, English ivy, and some of it died and some of it lived. So we'll see if any of it comes back. There are some crocuses poking their heads out of the ground. I've got a big ostrich fern. Where is that baby at? Right here. It's dead at the moment, but it'll sprout up come spring. Those get really big and you can eat some of the fiddleheads on them. Let's see, oh look, 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 look. There's some bulb popping up right there. I see, I don't remember what I planted here. Like this is definitely some sort of bulb and I would have planted more of them around this area. But I can't remember what I did. I'm gonna have to like go back and look at my video to, to remember what I planted. That's pretty bad, right? Okay, these are called autumn ferns. They're, they have a name, but they're like, they get really red and pretty in the autumn, like gold and red colors, orange colors. So those are really nice. Oh, I need to get this out of the way. Hi, Charlie. Let me get this out because I forgot to take that one out. Charlie, Charlie, what are you doing? Anyway, there's some crocuses right there. You can see a bunch of them popping up all through here. 
all those little grassy pieces right there. Right there's one. Um, yeah, so nice. And then of course I have my other rock which has succulents and a corabelle around it. And it's looking rough. Now in this corner, I want to show you guys. This is my burning bush, or not my burning bush, my butterfly bush over there, and it won't bloom until summer. So I put a bunch of tulips, and you can kind of see them popping up. There's one, there's one, and there's a bunch of them kind of coming up right there, um, all around through here. Yeah, there's one, and you can kind of see like right there's one, right there, right there, right there. So they're all popping up right in front of this butterfly bush like they kind of span this area and then right in front of all of this in front of these tulips these are like pink and or not pink I'm sorry they well yeah they are they're pink purple and white tulips then all through here there's like this white with very little bit of green color it's called prashinka or prashinkia I think um so those bulbs will pop up next so my tulips will be first there's a bunch of crocuses back here I gotta be careful I don't step on any bulbs they are everywhere and legos so there's my first crocus that has bloomed. Oh, look how pretty. Can you guys see it? I, I need it. I cleaned out the leaves, but I need to clean them out again. But yeah, there's my first crocus. And there's a bunch more in the back. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to like straddle all of those. <laughs> all of the tulips. Yeah, so all around the back, I planted crocuses because they're okay in shade. Um, and that's kind of like a shady area right there, I think. They do better in sun, but they're also okay right there. And you know, there are no leaves on the trees. Like we have two dogwoods right here and there are no leaves. So this whole bed gets a good bit of sun until those trees leaf out. And then it's like a partial, partial shade, partial sun kind of thing. Anyway, that's it. Here's my, here's my lavender and all kinds of trash that's blown around right here. But these aren't really, doing as well as the front lavender, so I'm thinking it's because they're not getting enough sun. Um, I thought that I had some more crocuses on this side somewhere, but I'm not seeing them, so maybe I don't. I have some hostas right here in this spot, so hostas die all the way back in the, like the fall and the winter, so you can't see that they are there, but they are there. Some little mouse ear hostas and some other Pasta. It's like two different varieties right there. Those are pretty. So I wanted my English Ivy all across the front of these railroad ties so that they would crawl over the railroad ties. And of course I mow, so I'll chop half of them, but I just love the look of like Ivy crawling all over things. At our house on the mountain, we had Ivy everywhere. It was beautiful. I loved it. There's a Corabel. You can see it. It's looking kind of rough, but it'll, it'll come back. So yeah, this this garden is kind of like a work in progress. I'm still trying to figure out, um, you know, what else I need to add to it to give it visual interest in the winter. That mess of a bed is a project for this year, for sure. And so I'll probably pull in some um, of this rock and then our big rocks. We have a ton of big rocks right here that we're gonna push over to the front of the house. We'll have some big rocks over there and I'll pull some of this color rock into that bed. Um, we'll probably have hostas over there and probably some sort of conifers. Charlie, here's the frogs. <laughs> Charlie, come on baby. You ready to go? Come on. Let's go inside. Come on. What are you doing, crazy dog? Charlie. He doesn't listen very well still at this point. Sometimes he does. Other times he doesn't. <laughs> Depends on what he's interested in. Okay. Uh oh, are you gone potty? Making messes in mama's yard. Come on, Charlie. Come on. Good boy. You're a good boy. We gotta wash those blinkies over there. Those are rosies. Do you see rosies? Oh, Rose. Rose doesn't put up with Charlie, no. 
So I forgot to show you my fridge. I told you earlier that I had prepped a bunch of food. Let me open this up for um, myself for the week. So our fridge is a little bit bare at the moment because Dean is picking up groceries. Um, but anyway, yeah. So these are the meals that I prepped for myself this week. These, this is leftover barbecue for the guys later this week, but this is some sort of like sweet potato and kale and chickpea with rice kind of meal. It's kind of like a soup, but you could eat it over rice, so I decided to do that. This, I ran out of big storage jars, so I just used one of my casserole dishes, but this is, um, it's like a peanut uh, stir fry kind of thing with rice, and I think you could do cauliflower rice with that if you wanted. This is a lentil, like taco mix. So it's got like a taco seasoning thing with lentils. It tasted really good, just like eating a little bit of it. Um, I haven't tried it yet, like on a taco. This is some sort of leftover, like pad thai kind of thing with peanut butter in it. It was pretty good. Um, and then I have some soup here. Some this is like chicken noodle soup, but it's chickpea, and I have some of that leftover, and that is delicious. Tastes just like chicken noodle soup obviously without the chicken, but it's still really good. Um, anyway, I have a good bit of veggies here and we've got some more stuff to restock later. Um, lots of vegetable stock, different things like that. Lots of hummus, love hummus and triscuits. That's like my snack when I'm doing no meat and no dairy. But anyway, um, so I wanted to show you guys like just the three things that I prepped this week and then I have like these two little leftovers. So that should be enough like for me to alternate things. And if I feel like I'm eating too much of the same thing. I will remake something that I made over the last two weeks and put that in here and eat that as well. Hey guys, so I'm just jumping on here to wrap up the first part of this week's vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with me this Monday um, and I hope you guys will join me for the next video where I share the rest of our week with you guys. Um, if you did enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up and if you have any questions or comments, definitely leave those in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys and I will get back to you right away. Um, yeah, and if you haven't already, definitely subscribe to my channel and you can click the little bell and turn on the notifications for the videos so you always know when a new weekly vlog is up. And I will see you guys in part two of this week's vlog in just a bit. Bye.